thousand dollars for a t-shirt. I think I got enough t-shirts. <laughs> Be careful now. You got lucky. You got two questions answered the right way today. I, I told them what to say before they came. Oh, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to be back with you. I think I've been down there five or six years in a row, Coach, and I appreciate you inviting me back down. And I get, a, I get a chance to go to a lot of touchdown clubs throughout the state. Hands down, no question about it, this is absolutely the best one that I've been in throughout the state. I think it's the best one in the state. And you ought to be proud of what you're doing here for the athletes in your community. Really, really proud. You know, every once in a while you have an opportunity to give back to a touchdown club, and I had that chance this year when we were back in camp. It was our last scrimmage, still in August, and it was extremely hot. And the Newberry County Touchdown Club wanted to do something special for the team. So they wanted to come out and cut watermelons for us because it was like 100 degrees, and about 12 o'clock that day we finished up, and they had all the watermelons laying out for us. But at the end, of the scrimmage, we didn't have a very good day. And I got really upset. You know, when I pulled the team together and I had a couple of choice words for them and I lost my temper a little bit. When we broke it down, I turned around, there was three TV crews in front of me. And they flipped them on and they asked me one question. And, you know, in the, in the playoffs, you know, you get a 10 minute cooling off period before you get to do any kind of interviews. I wish I would have adopted that philosophy that day. Well, they, they popped those TV cameras on. They said, Coach, I tell us what you think is the best thing you've seen all day today at the scrimmage. And I said, well, I think the best thing was the Newberry County Touchdown Club come out and cut watermelon for us. That's the best thing I've seen all day. <laughs> and you would not believe I got more emails, more phone calls, more text messages over that comment on the TV on the news when it came out that Saturday night. It was all positive. You know, people saying, Coach, we appreciate your honesty. You know, get them right, that kind of thing. But the best phone call I got was about a week later. And it was from the president of the Newberry County Touchdown Club. And he said, Coach, we appreciate you mentioning us. Our memberships have spiked 30% this week because <laughs> you said that on TV. So I had a chance to give back to the Touchdown Club a little bit. You know, going into a lot of clubs throughout the state, one thing that you start to see a little bit more of, you start to see more women just being involved in the touchdown club. And I'm glad to see that, you know, because young guys especially, listen to this, a good, honest woman. Now, you're going to have other ones in your life, but a good, honest woman will keep you grounded. Mama, grandma, and a pastor that might be a female, they'll keep you grounded in this world. You know, my wife, she's real good at that. Like, uh, there was a clinic that was going on this past summer. And we went to the clinic. She went shopping. She dropped me off at the clinic. Some of the greatest coaches in this state was there. You know? I was just lucky they let me in the door. Coach Pugh was there. Dabo, Spurrier, high school coaches like the Kissick. The best of the best. And, you know, that's the great thing about going to football clinics. Coaches, they'll share philosophies, plays, everything. And even I got a chance to get up and talk a little bit. When it was over with, she come and picked me up. She said, well, how was your clinic today? I said, oh, baby, you wouldn't believe all the great coaches that was there. And I started naming off all the great names. And I said, you know, even I got to talk. And she looked at me kind of strange. She said, well, you know, there was one less great coach there than you think there was. <laughs> woman to keep you grounded now. It was homecoming at our place. Coach talked about having a big crowd. We probably had the biggest crowd we ever had at Newberry College this past year at homecoming. And I got the team by the locker room and we walking through the grass field. And we got the gate, main gate, going into the stadium. And I got them all in front of me. I'm going to make sure I got them all in the gate and I'll go to the front and lead them out on the field. But as I got to the gate, my wife comes running up, yelling, Todd, Todd, wait a minute. Gosh, you know, this is kind of a, a, a tense little moment right here. And she's running, there's got to be something wrong. And I said, well, what, what is it, baby? What is it? She said, you know where I can find a ladder? A ladder. You know what I said? Uh, Tina, really? A ladder? I'm about to walk in the gate right here. She said, well, your son threw his football on top of the gym. I, I, I need a ladder. I said, baby, if you just let me coach homecoming, I promise I'll find you a ladder. Right after the ball game. <laughs> Mama. Wives, aunts, they'll keep you grounded. Young guys, you know, you can make 
five touchdowns. You can lead the team in tackles. You'll go home that night, and you'll have to pick up in your room. You'll have to take the trash out. You'll have to fold the clothes. Put your clothes away. Good woman to keep you ground. And we need that. Ladies, thank you. Thank you for what you do for us. You know, coming back down here, I've been influenced over the years. You know, six, five, six years down here. But I've been listening to this man right here talk for probably 20 years at different things. And he talked about his old mule earlier. I heard that story or, or a version of that story about 20 years ago when he talked about his mule. And Coach, I want to tell you, you've kind of been a, you know, an example and a mentor to me. And I kind of try to, to, to pattern you when it comes to speaking. So I've kind of adopted that thing with the mules. And I've used animals in a lot of my speeches and how it relates to life and football and that kind of thing. So Coach, you know, I wanted you to know that I got a lot of great things from you. But I'm going to continue on that animal theme today. There was a king a long, long time ago had a vast kingdom. And all of a sudden one day he decided he wanted to get up early the next morning. He wanted to go on a hunting trip. So he called his top advisor in. And he said, listen, you're my top advisor. You're the smartest man in the kingdom. I want to go hunting early in the morning. But I want you to tell me right now, is it going to rain tomorrow or not? Because I don't want to get everything ready to get out in the woods at the bottom of all of it and have a bad day. So the old advisor went through the window. He looked out, paused for a little bit, and come back in and said, King, don't worry about nothing. He said, Go ahead and get everything packed up. Take off early in the morning. It's going to be a great day. I hope you're back a bit. Next morning, up early, King and his entourage are out. They get going out in the woods about an hour or so, and the sky starts to gray up a little bit. The old king started to question whether the smartest man in the kingdom knows what he's doing or not. He goes on a little deeper into the woods and they come up on a farm. The sky's looking rough. He sees a farmer out there plowing the field with the old mule. So he gets an idea. He says, well, nobody knows the weather better than a farmer. Let me go over and ask him. So he said, excuse me there, farmer. I, your king, have a question for you. Yes, yes, my king. What is it? I want to know, is it going to rain today? Because I don't want to go no further into the woods and get called out the rain. He said, give me a second here, King. So he put his whip down, took his reins off, went around there to the front, grabbed the mule by the head, looked him in the eye, and he never whispered in his ear. Looked back at the mule, and the mule twitched. He tried to hear. He went back to the king and said, King, you better turn around and take it back to the castle. It's going to rain like crazy today. He said, well, how do you know why I'm so sure? He said, my mule knows the weather. He said, when he twitches his right ear, it's going to rain. If he twitches his left ear, you're going to have a sunny day. King laughed at him. He said, I, I got the smartest man in the kingdom. And I'm going to listen to a mule. No way. We go with him. So we got on in the woods about another hour and the bottom fell out. Rain like crazy. So the king turned around and hauled it back to the castle. So he got a bag of gold and he sent people to the farm. He said, go buy the mule and bring it back to me. He brought the mule back to the castle. He called his top advisor in and he said, you're fired. Get out. And he hired the mule <laughs> as his top advisor. A glorified weatherman, right? But the king made a mistake. Do you know what his mistake was? He hired the mule. That was the mistake because now every jackass in the kingdom thinks they're a weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> now look, last year at this time, we were seven and one. I didn't have a bunch of weathermen telling me what to do. This year, we three and five. I got donkeys coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the passion that people have for the game in this state. That's the passion that you have here in your touchdown club. And I love it. I want it that way. That's why I enjoy coaching ball in the state because people love it. Young student athletes. And you can listen to all the rest of you and then come back home and mama will keep you grounded. But finding that balance between the two, that's when you know you're going to be okay. You know, going into the season, we had a philosophy going into it. And the idea was dream big. And we got this from our president. 
And it's not just something that we want to take into the season or one or two particular ball games. It's a philosophy. It's not a living in the moment kind of thing. It's, a, it's an idea that you want to have philosophy for life. Dreaming big. Newberry College is dreaming big. And we've had several guys that's come through our program. That's had an opportunity to see their dream come true. Their big dream come true. You know, we have Ron Parker. That is a South Carolina high school football product. That dared to dream big when he came in the door at Newberry College. Ron started at corner for the Kansas City Chiefs the first three ball games of the year. And then his starting safety gets hurt and they move Ron from corner and now he started every ball game at free safety. So a kid that played ball at Newberry College can start at two different spots in the NFL. That's dreaming big. I'm proud of him. You know, we got Kamal McElwain, a South Carolina high school football product. He's been with three different NFL teams. He's with the Buffalo Bills. That kid was dreaming big when he was at Newberry College, and his dreams come true. Brandon Boston, a South Carolina high school football product that started at tight end early in the year. Now he's bouncing back and forth between first and second team with the Green Bay Packers and scored the first touchdown in the NFL from anybody that's ever come out of Newberry College. That's dreaming big. This past year, we had Corey Washington, a South Carolina high school football player, playing for the New York Giants. And I didn't even know that the NFL gave away an award like this, but that kid got the preseason MVP for the NFL from Newberry College. That's dreaming big. But it's not just about the NFL with us, and it's not something that's in the moment. You know, dreaming big for our kids is get your degree. Get out and get that job that you've always wanted. Find that special woman. Fall in love. Start a family. Be a good husband. Be a good father. Be a good citizen. That's dreaming big. And those dreams are coming true for our kids. And we're proud of them at Newberry College. And our president, bringing this philosophy, this idea to us, he started the first ever capital campaign. Hundred something years as a college, never had a capital campaign. Quiet. He's raised nine million dollars. He wants to raise thirty-five million dollars. That's dreaming big for a school with a thousand students. And his vision, his dream. He had a party the other day and opened it up officially. He said, "We're not in the quiet phase anymore." He put pictures all in the newspaper. He put these pictures in the newspaper. $35 million. He wants to build several things on campus, but the priority is a stadium for our young men, for our <coughs> athletic programs at Newberry College. And our president with his philosophy of dreaming big, it's not just in the moment. This is for the future of Newberry College, the future of our program. And he's got us all dreaming big right now. But I want our kids to also have fun in the moment while they're dreaming big. So we do some things a little bit different from time to time. You know, on a Friday night, we'll go bowling as a team. On a Friday night, we'll go to the movies. Next Friday night, we're going to go to a concert. Because I want those kids to enjoy being on a team together. But also keeping that big dream alive for the future. You know, somebody touched on Halloween. Friday night big. Uh, big for you guys, but I, I love Halloween. It's probably my favorite holiday, right? You get to be somebody else besides yourself for one night, right? And our kids, we're going to have a costume contest. Everybody on the football team has got to dress up. And I'm going to give away five prizes to the top five costumes because I want them to enjoy the moment but still dream big. But you got to get into the mood. 